Okay, let's see question number 10 from October 2023, P3 paper. So question number 10 is basically the last question from P3 October 2023 paper. This is basically from calculus differentiation. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, a curve C has equation y equals to x, uh, x equals to sine square for y, where the values, the range of values for y is given, the range of values for x is given. Okay, fine. The point P with x coordinate 1 over 4 lies on C. Lies on C. We got 1 x coordinate, that is 1 over 4. So we need to find out the exact y coordinate of p. Okay. So this is pretty easy. Just you will plug in the value for x into the equation. So for part a, we will plug in what x equals to x equals to 1 over 4. So if you put x equals to 1 over 4, what you will get? Sine squared 4y sine squared 4y would be equals to 1 over what 4 okay so what we can do now square root both sides so we'll get sine 4y equals to plus minus what half okay we got sine 4y equals to plus minus half now we need the exact y coordinate of p so sine 4y sine 4y we can see that the range of possible values for y is between 0 to pi over 8. So we will get what? Sine inverse half is pi over. So 4y is either it is what? Pi over how much? Uh, half is sine 30, degree, 30 degree degrees pi over 6 radian. Or it will be negative. But we will ignore the negative values because the limit for y values is between 0 to pi over 8. So we got y equals to pi over 6. The other one would be for negative half. It will be negative pi over 6. But we will ignore this because it's outside the range of possible values of y. So y equals to we will get pi over what? Pi over 24 radian. That's the exact y coordinate of point P. Uh, are there any? Yeah, that's the. No, there's no other possible values for y. So that's the y coordinate of point P. This is the y coordinate of point P. Fine. Next, in part B, they ask for what? Find dx over dy. So we know that x equals to what? For part B, x is given as sine squared 4y. Sine squared 4y. So we need to just differentiate it. So just directly differentiate dx over dy. So when you differentiate what we know, the power will get reduced by 1. So sine square 4y, it was earlier. So it will be now sine 4y. Sine 4y. And then the power will get multiplied with the coefficient so that that would be true since the previous power was two and then it is chain rule so for chain rule we will differentiate sine 4y as you differentiate sine 4y the derivative of sine 4y is 4 cos 4y so times 4 and with that a cos 4y will get multiplied so cos 4y so dx over dy, we got 8 sine 4y cos 4y. That's it. So that's the dx over dy. That's enough for two marks. Okay. Next is for part C. Is it possible to simplify it further? Yes, we can using trigonometric double equal formula. You can write sine 4y cos y. We know that uh, sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. So in that case, 
since it is sine 4y we can write uh, 4 sine 8y in this case we can write this as if you keep it as it is that will be fine no problem but if you want to simplify it further you can write 4 4 sine it will be 8y that's it <coughs> okay so for part c hence show that dy over dx can be written in the form in this form we can write dy over dx we need to show that okay so you already already got dx over dy okay that's why we don't need to simplify it further because we need to represent in this form so it's enough to keep it in this form okay let's see so we got dx over dy equals to 8 sine 8 sine uh, 8 sine 4y cos what 4y okay now reverse it consider the reciprocal you'll get dy over dx equals to what 1 over 8 sine 4y times what cos 4y cos 4y okay now what we can do we need substitutes for sine 4y and cos 4y how can we get the substitutes from this equation x sine square 4y is x so what we know that sine square 4y this is x sine squared 4y this is x so what we can write sine 4y can be written as what just square root of x okay okay so we got sine 4y equals to square root of x now we need to we need a substitute for cos 4y so we know that sine squared 4y plus cos squared 4y this is what 1 so cos squared cos squared 4y can be written as what 1 minus sine squared 4y now cos 4y make uh, cos 4y just cos 4y by square root both side so cos 4y would be equal to square root of 1 minus sine squared 4y is what x so just put x there done we got the substitutes for sine 4y and cos 4y now our work is to just substitute it on their respective places so 8 sine 4y is what x and then cos 4y is one, square root of 1 minus x that's it that's what they wanted okay they wanted in a quadratic form so what we can do look uh, they have a constant no constant outside so we can do one thing look that's not a uh, difficult thing everyone can do till this till this part but what's to do what to do next that's the problem we need a quadratic equation in the denominator with square root above it so that means we need to multiply 1 minus x by an x right so where we would get this the x the outside we we see an x outside we will multiply it within the square root by squaring squaring it okay so what you will get square root of 8 squared is what 64 x squared then minus what 64 x squared minus 64 x to the power 4 so from there you can take what common okay if you if you multiply by x squared it will be x cubed not x to the power 4 okay uh, it will be x cubed there so put it x cubed there okay now what we can do uh, we can okay this is x plus s whole squared in the denominator okay we got x squared sine square 4y this is x 
okay so cos 4y cos square 4y is 1 minus sin square 4y okay okay so how do we got 64x squared baggage yeah so I think I did some mistake there it should be 64x squared okay I think we got some mistake there let's let's erase this okay look 8 sine 4y cos 4y so we got sine 4y this is square root of x that's the mistake I put it there just x that's the mistake okay we got this so that should be square root of x it should be square root of x so that we will get 8 times square root of x minus x squared that's it okay now what we can do multiply uh, the bracket square root by squaring 8 so it will get 64x minus 64 x squared okay now what we can do look just complete the square we will use the formula for completing the square how we can do that just take negative 64 come on from there okay so you'll get x squared x squared minus x just so look x squared plus bx so now you can easily use the formula x plus b over 2 whole square so negative 64 times what bracket x plus b over 2 whole squared minus b over 2 whole squared this is negative 1 over 4 bracket closed that's it now what we can do 1 over multiply negative 64 with the bracket what you will get square root of negative 64 x minus half whole square plus 64 negative 64 over 4 is what 16 yeah negative negative it will become positive so plus 16 so we got dy over dx can be written as dy over dx can be written as what it can be written as 1 over 1 over square root of 16 minus 64 times x minus half whole square that's it that's what they wanted right that's what the format they wanted there q plus r times x plus s so q r s okay q is what q is 16 we got q is 16 r is 64 okay was it uh, okay it was plus there so it is negative 64 and s is what it's negative half that's it we're done with part c okay for part d using the part to answer uh, answer to part c state the x coordinate of the point where the value of dy over dx is a minimum where the value for dy over dx is a minimum that means we need to find out the x coordinate where the derivative is minimum so look at this equation if you see the denominator of the derivative it is a quadratic formula and this is a quadratic formula with a negative coefficient of x squared if i show you the previous one before simplifying you can understand it better negative 64 x squared so the coefficient of x squared is negative that means this quadratic equation on the denominator has a maximum turning point that's what we learned in p1 quadratics so we will use this concept to find out the maximum value of the denominator why we are focusing on the maximum value of the denominator because for maximum value of the denominator dy the derivative of y would be what minimum and that's what they wanted so using our concept from pure mathematics one we can say that 
the x coordinate within the bracket of the completing the square form what is this this is the completing the square form and the uh, and the and, and the co constant that lies within the bracket with x it is what negative half so this the opposite this is the value for x but it is just opposite sign x minus half there so we will consider x equals to half this is the x coordinate of the maximum turning point of the quadratic this quadratic denominator okay so we got the value for x is what half this is concept from p1 for completing the square form we can get the x and y coordinates of the turning points okay so we got the x coordinate coordinate this, this is half and at last they asked for the value of the derivative so the value is what from the concept we know that the y coordinate of the quadratic equation would be of the of the turning point of the quadratic function would be the part the constant that lies outside the bracket so which constant lies outside the bracket in the completing the square form this is 16 so the maximum value of the denominator is it's what 16 so 1 over square root of 16 is what 1 over square root of 16 is 1 over 4 this is 1 over 4 yes the minimum value we got okay we got the minimum value of y this is 1 over 4 and that's the minimum value of the derivative at yeah derivative of the curve c that's all about question number 10 from october uh, 2023 paper p3